The Mandela Effect is a phenomenon that has captured the attention and imagination of many, sparking discussions about the nature of memory, reality, and the possible existence of parallel universes. While skeptics attribute the Mandela Effect to cognitive biases and false memories, proponents of the quantum perspective, such as myself, suggest that it may be evidence of our ability to shift between alternate realities through quantum jumping. The term Mandela Effect was coined by Fiona Broom, a self-proclaimed paranormal consultant. She discovered in 2009 that she, along with several others, believed that Nelson Mandela had passed away in the 1980s but it's actually currently stated that he died in 2013. The Mandela Effect refers to the phenomenon where a large group of people collectively remember an event, fact, or detail differently from how it's recorded in historical records or official accounts. This type of collective remembering has sparked intense debates about what really happens when one experiences this phenomenon. The Mandela Effect is a manifestation of our ability to travel between parallel realities through a process known as quantum jumping. Parallel realities, also known as parallel universes, or the multiverse, is a framework that has gained prominence in the field of quantum physics. According to this theory, our universe is not the only one. Instead, there are countless other universes existing alongside our own, each with its own set of physical laws and conditions. These parallel realities can be thought of as separate branches stemming from quantum events, creating a vast and interconnected multiverse. From this quantum perspective, quantum jumping is the mechanism by which consciousness can navigate between these unobserved states or parallel realities. In other words, our conscious choices may influence the reality that we experience, allowing us to jump from one parallel universe to another. When someone experiences a Mandela effect, they may have shifted from one reality where a particular memory or event occurred differently than someone else's current recollection of it. Following are some examples of the Mandela Effect that you may or may not remember the same way as others do. And be sure to stick around for the last one because it's the newest and most current Mandela Effect example that's been going around the internet. Number one, did Ed McMahon work for Publishers Clearinghouse? Do you remember the videos of Ed McMahon pulling up to people's doorsteps and handing them winning checks from the publisher's clearinghouse? Some say that that never happened. Current reality tries to state that Mr. McMahon never worked for publisher's clearinghouse and that people are only confused because he worked briefly for a magazine marketing company called American Family Publishers. That company only paid out checks to its own employees. Even publisher's clearinghouse themselves say that Ed McMahon never worked for them. However, in my research, I found some strong evidence that he did, in fact, work for Publishers Clearinghouse. Here's an interview with Ed McMahon and Tom Green, where Tom is clearly talking about a check and Publishers Clearinghouse. Anyone was we went up to some guys and I uh, I asked them if they had anything they wanted to say to you, and yeah. I had I didn't really connect what they were talking about. They started saying that you owed them money for a check or something like that, and I wasn't thinking oh, about yeah, Publishers well, yeah. Clearinghouse. I, I, I know those guys, and they're they're still waiting for their money. You would actually walk up to people's doorsteps and give them the oh, check. Oh yeah, sure. How many times did you present someone with a well, million dollars? I gave dollar away one hundred and ten million dollars. A hundred and ten million. Yeah. How good must have that felt? Oh, it's wonderful. We had to have a nurse in residence. Are you kidding me? It's a wonderful feeling, you know, to, to give somebody a million dollars. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. What would people would just sort of oh, overwhelm with you know, joy? They almost faint. They would almost faint. And here's another video where Ed McMahon answers a question about working with Publishers Clearinghouse. It's really, when you look at your career, you have done so many different things. I mean, I, I, you know, when you sit there and started listing all those off, I mean, the Publishers Clearinghouse thing, I know it was just a job, but that's kind of turned into something that's oh, yeah. very bizarre, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's crazy, because that's what everybody talks about. I mean, everybody today that I've passed in this auditorium have said, where's my $10 million? I found that even ChatGPT is pulling from multiple sources by giving conflicting answers to this question. All I can say is that in my reality, Ed McMahon definitely showed up on doorsteps with large checks. Maybe in yours that never happened. In the movie Snow White, believe it or not, Mirror Mirror on the Wall was never said by the Wicked Queen. In fact, she says, Magic Mirror on the Wall. Magic Mirror on the Wall, who is the fairest one of all? 
A popular Mandela effect is the Berenstein Bears. Many people remember this well-known children's book as Berenstein Bears instead of the current Berenstain Bears. Which one do you remember? A lot of people often remember the cereal as Fruit Loops with a U when it's actually currently spelled with two O's. Speaking of fruit, here's Fruit of the Loom. Although a lot of people remember a cornucopia being in the Fruit of the Loom logo, it's actually shown currently as just a bunch of fruit and claimed by Fruit of the Loom themselves to never have had the cornucopia as a part of their logo. In the James Bond film Moonraker, people remember Dolly having braces when she smiles at Jaws. I found two versions of this video showing each. My question is, has this video been edited? Or is it truly the Mandela effect? Apparently, C-3PO has a silver leg, but many fans, including some I know, remember him as 100% gold. Some remember the Looney Tunes logo as Looney Tunes with two O's, instead of the current spelling of Looney Tunes with a U. A popular and widely debated product amongst those who discuss the Mandela Effect is Jif, or Jiffy peanut butter. Which do you remember? Okay, uh, do this quickly, quickly, uh, peanut butter. Hey, peanut butter, not Skippy, but uh, uh, the other one. Skip, the other one. Jelly. Uh, oh, they're looking for Jiffy. Jiffy, Jiffy. Oh, Jiffy! <laughs> According to this history, it was never named Jiffy. In this reality, it's claimed that it's always been called Jif. But many people recall an ad campaign that told mothers they could fix their kids a snack in a Jiffy. And it was even spotted in an episode of American Dad in which the character is uncovering a conspiracy. Some claim that people confuse the name with Skippy peanut butter, Jiffy popcorn, or Jiffy corn muffin mix. And the most recent confusion and debate around the Mandela effect seems to be the passing of Bob Barker. A lot of people claim that they remember the game show host passing away several years ago. From my research into this, it's claimed that Bob Barker was a victim of an internet death hoax by a website calling themselves Action 3 News in 2017. This might explain why some remember his passing, or it could have another explanation altogether. There are a lot of people who also believe that the European Organization for Nuclear Research, commonly known as CERN, plays a pivotal role in this phenomenon. CERN is at the forefront of particle physics research. The LHC, the most powerful particle accelerator ever built, allows scientists to study the fundamental particles that make up our universe. Here are a few reasons why some people believe that CERN is intrinsically linked to the Mandela Effect. 1. Manipulating reality. The LHC's experiments, which deal with energies and conditions mimicking those just after the Big Bang, might have the potential to affect the fabric of reality itself. Some speculate that these experiments could cause ripples or shifts between alternate dimensions. 2. Symbolic Clues The presence of a statue of the Hindu god Shiva, sometimes referred to as the Destroyer and Transformer, at CERN's headquarters is seen by some as a symbolic nod to the organization's power to alter or transform reality. And 3. Whispers and Admissions There are claims of insiders or former CERN employees hinting at the organization's deeper, undisclosed objectives. These whispers fuel the belief that CERN's experiments have far-reaching implications beyond particle physics. Believers point to the timing of CERN's experiments as evidence of the Mandela Effect. They note that the surge in reported Mandela Effect instances seems to align with significant milestones in CERN's research timeline. Additionally, some of CERN's own publications and videos which discuss topics like parallel universes and extra dimensions, are seen as subtle admissions of their involvement in creating or accessing alternate realities. Whether CERN's involvement is true or not, the Mandela Effect remains a topic of passionate discussion among believers, intriguing researchers and the public alike. Debate over the nature of memory, reality, and the mysteries of the Mandela Effect 
will persist, captivating the minds of those who seek to understand the unexplainable things of our universe. There are many more examples to be found than the ones that I've highlighted here. It's also quite possible, and likely probable, that the world is not as linear and fixed as it seems. The cases given here could be explained as individuals quantum jumping between parallel realities, where timelines and events are different. It's quite possible that we reside in a tapestry of interwoven realities, with our consciousness and our perception holding the needle that stitches them together.